Okay, well, hello. Uh, my name is Scott Grizzard from the University of South Florida. This is Calculus uh, for Fall 2020. Um, and tonight we are talking about the area under the curve function. So as last time, um, we started talking about, um, uh, just like last time where we did the uh, lecture on Sunday instead of just before the test, uh, we're doing that again. So Sunday, Monday lectures this week. Sunday and Monday, and of course Thursday lectures this week um, uh, for um, today. So um, for this week, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, what we want to talk about, which is the area under the curve. Now, the textbook, um, which is very good, presents what we're talking about, the integral, in a certain way. Okay, so the order of the textbook is to do antiderivatives first, and then to do kind of Riemann sums and all of these other things to build up to this idea of area under the curve. And it's a very static interpretation, uh, which is great. Um, but there's a piece of it, if you don't, if you do it that way, there's ups and downs to doing that way. And it makes understanding what the whole point of the class is, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus, it actually makes it harder to understand. So what we want to do is we want to talk about the area under the curve as something that moves. And I'll show you what I mean by this, but it sort of reverses the order. So the first thing, we're actually going to start by talking about the AUC function and the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, and then we're going to kind of go backwards through the thing. And it won't be the last thing we do because we'll do like a problem set on antiderivatives. But it's not... Uh, the order will be slightly out of, it, it'll be out of sync with the others. Now, given that you guys did very well on test two and, and you know, from what I've seen of test three, it's nice. I'm going to go out on a, I'm going to, I'm going to say that I think you're willing to go out of this kind of unconventional way of approaching it with me. Um, and so to say the other way is bad, it just, you miss something in it. Um, and I don't want you to miss this because this is one if you have this kind of understanding, it's actually really useful and helpful. And for the other reason is because it's actually kind of cool, um, which I know is you're like, ooh, math, not cool. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it brings something out that miss it, that you're missing if you just do the regular kind of static view of it. And the motivating question is this, okay? So here's the motivating question. The area of a circle, what is the area format, uh, formula for a circle? What is the formula for that? A equals what? Pi r squared. Now, the, the circumference of a circle, okay, is the boundary. And the formula for that is 2 pi r. What's the relationship between these two functions? What is the relationship between pi r squared and 2 pi r? Why is it that dA over dR equals C. Why is circumference, which I can never spell, and I should probably learn how to spell that word, right? Circumference. Why is circumference the derivative of area. That's kind of weird. Isn't it when we think about it? That's kind of a weird thing. And that's kind of the nature of the thing we want us to talk about. We want to talk about why is the area contained within the boundary? Why is the derivative of the area the measure in some sense of the boundary? That's kind of weird, okay? So the function we want to talk about is this thing called area under the curve, all right? 
So let's kind of define it informally. The area under the curve function. So what I want to do is I want to have some function continuous on an interval, okay? So we're gonna let D be an interval. We'll say an open interval for the moment. It doesn't really matter. And let um, F be a function, a continuous function. Yeah, we'll just say be a continuous function. Okay. And then let A be some point in D. Okay. So here's my idea. All right, let's see my idea here. So here's the idea. I've got this kind of function here. For some reason, the double tap is not moving. Here, this particular function is one plus the cosine of x or cosine of t, okay? And then I have a base point. In this case, you know, in the general, my base point is x. Here, my base point is a. In general, my base point is A. Here, my base point is zero. Okay? So, the area under the curve function that I want to define. Okay? All right. So, the area under the curve uh, this is a definition. under the curve from a to x uh, and this den is denoted from base point a a and then the the way that we denote this curve is a u c f a of x, okay, measures the area between the x-axis and f from base point A, and I should say something more here. It's not just the area, it's the signed area. And I'll say to you what that means in just a moment. If I can spell that. Two X. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's look at what I've got here. So here I've got the function, uh, here I've got the function one plus cosine of t with a base point of zero, okay? So one to five, how do we feel about this idea that f is one plus cosine of t and zero is the base point I'm going to start with? How do we feel about that one to five? Okay. Oh. We got two people doing simple bots. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit play. And notice what happens here. As X moves, right? The base point was zero. Now X is 0 0.9. Now F of 0 0.9 
Right, I keep moving, I keep moving, I keep moving, and let's stop it here at uh, pi-ish. Okay, so around pi, it's not going to be perfect because it's it's the discrete number of frames. All right, so that's the best I'm going to do. Right, so around pi, this function is zero. Right, that's the value the value of f. So f of three point one four would be zero. But notice here that I've accumulated green area, and that's the area under the curve. So it's the area between this line here and the x-axis. One to five, how do we feel about that? I'm kind of accumulating area as I go to the right. So notice here, as I go to the right, I keep accumulating more and more area, right? And here's the accumulation of area. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of under the curve. I'm, I'm measuring the area between the, the function and the x-axis. And when you see green, that means I'm acquiring positive area. So as I go to the right, I'm kind of acquiring area. Okay? All right. Let's look at another one here. This is the, this is, I'm starting at one, right? So this one I started at zero here, I've got the base point of one. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let it go. Okay, I don't know why. Okay, this one's calling itself something different. I don't know why the notation on this one's wrong. I, I probably need to rerun it, but it takes too long. So here, right, my, I started here with my A. Here was my A, and I started, and I ran area under the curve for that. Okay? So I'm measuring the area from this base point one as I move to the right. Right, so if I pause it at any given point, right, that's the amount of area I've accumulated. I've accumulated 0.59 units of area. I keep going, and now I've accumulated more. About here, I've accumulated, you know, as I keep going, I've accumulated a little bit more. Right here, I've accumulated um, about 0 0.9 units of area and so on and so forth as I go to the right. Okay? Now, what do I mean by the signed area? Okay, so let's write this. If, a, if x is greater than a, and f of x is greater than zero, uh, AUC acquires acquire uh, uh, acquires positive area as we move from left to right. Okay. So let me go ahead and put that back on the tablet. So if X is greater than A, I've acquired positive area as I move from left to right. Okay. Now, here's a slightly different function. Here I'm going to acquire positive area as well. But only for a while, because look what happens right when I get to 2. I start acquiring negative area. So if I'm below the x-axis, and ignore this little, this right here is just a little, uh, that's not uh, supposed to be negative area. That's an artifact of the program, of the animation. But I'm acquiring positive area when I'm positive. But now, as I move to the right, here, I'm, my f is below the axis, right? This is f of x equals x squared minus 3 fourths x cubed plus 1 8 uh, t or x to the fourth. 
And as I move to the right here, notice that I'm now acquiring negative area because I'm below the axis. So one to five, how do we feel about that? So, if x is greater than a, and f of x is less than 0, a u c f a acquires negative area. Okay, so one to five, how do we feel about that? If I'm above, let's actually get aware of this. If those conditions, I'll just write this one. If that and if that, right? If, if I'm above the x-axis, I'm acquiring positive area. And if I'm below the x-axis, I'm acquiring negative area. Okay. Okay. So we have some people happy with that and some people not. All right, so let's do an example. Okay. We've done some animations. Let's do a hard example. All right, so let's let f of x equal 1 half x. And let's let a equal zero. Okay. So now my question is what is a u c f zero of one? Okay. All right, well, let's put a picture on it. Oops, I want to go the other way. Let's do a little picturing here. Oops, I don't have this thing up. Sorry. Okay, so here's a nice little picture for us. We want to know what is AUC, what is the area under the curve of this F. So this is F of X equals, uh, you know what, let's move all of this. Let's make this picture a little bit bigger. Let's just move this right under here. Perfecto. Okay, so how would I compute the area under the curve from base point zero to one uh, with f of x equals one half of one half of x? Okay. Any takers? Anyone want to give a guess? Okay, well, let's see what it would be. Let's move from left to right here. And I'm above the axis, so I'm accumulating positive area. Okay. 
Okay. So what is it going to be? A, you see of this. What do we have here? Well, we have the area of this triangle. So that means that AUC F0 of 1 is going to equal what? I've got positive area, and I've got, what's the formula for this? It's 1 half base times height, correct? So it would be 1 half. The length of the base is 1. And the height is 1 half. Okay, so that's going to equal one-fourth. One to five, how do we feel about that? Right, so the area under the curve is going to be one-half times the base times the height. The height is 0.5. The base is 1, because this is the base point. Okay. I've got 1 quarter, right? I've got 1 half times 1 half. All right. So now the question is, what is AUC F? Zero of two. Okay. Let's add some more here. All right. So now we're going not just from one, now we're going from zero to two. All right. Okay, so that's going to be one half base times height. The base is two and the height is one. Okay. Well, let's do three. A U C F three. I'm sorry, F zero. Right, my base point is still zero. So the area under the curve from zero to three equals what? Oops, that's the wrong pen. I start all the way over there at zero, and I'm sweeping out everything from zero to three. Okay. So from zero to three, I've swept out one half the base three times the height one point five. All right, so this is going to be nine over four. Okay, one to five, how do we feel about that? All two people who are still watching. I guess other people had better things to do on, uh, on uh, Sunday night. One to five, how do we feel? Okay. All right. So now let's look at how would I solve this for X in general? 
Let's look at that. What about for X in general? So what is if, if I have a generic X, what would I do? I do one half base times height. So A U C F zero of X equals, okay, so one half times the base, which is, which is X, right? times the height, which is f of x. Correct? And that's one half x times, and then f of x is one half x. That's the y, right? f of x here is the y value. This is just the triangle bit. So that means that here, I'm going to wind up with uh, x squared over 4. That's what AUC F0 equals of x. So if I wanted the generic function, that's what it would equal. Okay. So 1 to 5, how do we feel about this? For a line, this would be the generic function. There's the base and there's the height. Okay. For this particular F. Okay. Here's something though that's interesting. What happens when I take the derivative of this? Notice what happens when I take the derivative of this function. This function is x squared over 4. I take the derivative. I get, uh, I get 1 half. I get, I'm sorry, I get 2 times x over 4, which is simply x over 2, which is the exact same thing as f. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? I do the derivative. I got back, well, I got back my original function. How do we feel about that? Okay. So let's look at this again. Ah, excuse me. And there's all cramped up. Let's look at one more of these types of things here. All right, so here what I had was, let's change the base point. So let's look at what happens. What happens if we choose a base point of two? Uh, let's choose a base point of one, okay? So same F, new A.
Same F, but now we're going to choose an A of 1. Okay. So now our A is here. Now, what is AUC F1 of 1? Well, it's going to be 0, right? Because I have no width. Okay, what is AUC F2? I'm sorry, F1 of 2. So now I'm going to go all the way out to 2. I'm going to start at 1, and I'm going to go to 2. Okay, so one to five, how do we feel about what I'm asking? One to five, how do we feel about what I'm asking here? Um, is the string li stream lagging badly? It says it has no dropped frames. Um, it says it's got a really high bit rate and no dropped frames, so I don't know why it would be lagging. All right. Well, let's look at this. How would I compute this? Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this area here and then I'm going to subtract that area there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the triangle So triangle from zero to two and subtract the small one from zero to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this area here Right? I'm going to take this big area here. I'm going to take this big area here, and then I'm going to subtract this. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one half, two times one, minus one half, one times one half. So this big one here is one, right? One half times two times one, minus one half times one half, so that's a quarter. So that's gonna give me three fourths. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay. I'm 
So what I'm going to get in general, notice what's going on here. I've actually now got several things going on here. But let's do it for a more general function. In general, not a more general function, uh, it, it, let's do this one for a general x. AUCF1 of x is going to equal, okay, this thing here. So I'm going to go from 0 to whatever the x is, wherever x is. I'm going to do the big triangle again, and then I'm going to subtract that same little triangle. So I'm going to get one half the x times f of x minus one half times one times one half. So in other words, for a generic one, I'm going to get one half x times what's so f of x here would be one half x minus one quarter. One to five. How do we feel about that? Okay. What happens when I take the derivative of this? It doesn't matter. The fact that I just took the derivative, the base point didn't matter. The derivative was still the same. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Huh. Notice also... A, U, C f1 of x equals a u c f 0 of x minus a u c f 0 of 1. In other words, if I wanted to start at 1 and go to 2, I start at 0 and go to 2, and then I subtract the 0 to 1. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay. One other thing to note here. Okay. Same base point, and let's note one other little thing. All right, let's see. How do I do this? I go here. Uh, copy. Paste. Let's note one other little thing that's kind of cool about this. Okay. I had, so let f of x be the same thing it was before. And let's keep a exactly what it was before as well. Now, if I take my formula, okay, 
if I take my formula and let's say I want to do, so my formula was AUC F1 of X equaled X squared over four minus one fourth. So the next question is what happens if my base point is to the left? Okay. Well, let's say I want AUC F1 of zero. According to my formula, I should get zero squared over four minus one over four, which equals negative one fourth, which gives me this other thing. If I'm left of the base point and above the X axis, I have negative area. One to five, how do we feel about that? I'm going to give, in order to make these formulas consistent, I make negative area when I'm left. So here we go. If F of, if A is less than X. So if I'm moving to the right, A, U, C, and F of X is greater than zero. A U C F um, uh, the area is going to be positive. If A is greater than X, so if I'm left of the endpoint and F of X is less than zero area is negative okay so let's see that so one to five how do we kind of feel about that statement it's not actually area it's going to be the derivative of area okay so let's look at one of these where i'm off to the left here right here we've got uh here we have one, right? This is f. This is f of x equals x, and I'm just gonna go when I hit play here. Here I'm at zero, and I'm starting to the left. My base point is two, and I'm at zero. Okay. So now I'm gonna hit play, and notice here as I move to the right, I'm taking away negative area, because that area is negative. Okay, and then when I get to two, it becomes zero because that is my base point. And then as I go to the right, I'm now adding positive area. Okay. So there you go. There's the whole thing, right? I, I've, when I'm when I'm negative left, I'm adding positive area. I've got positive area. When I'm in this quadrant here, when I'm ne left, not negative. When I'm left but uh, um, above, I've got negative area. When I'm right above, I get positive area, and when I'm right below, I add negative area. Okay. So we have these things right here. If A is less than X and, I'm sorry, that should be a, a greater than zero, area negative. If A is less than X and F of X is less than zero, I add a positive area. I'll put that there, add positive area. Uh, I'll just put, positive area that's right positive negative so if I'm X is right and I'm at a I've got um, negative and if I'm left and below
So if you remember this picture, if you remember this moving picture, it actually works really well. So one to five, how do we feel about that? And do we have any questions? I'm not seeing another enough questions. Okay. So, so far we've seen a couple of interesting things, right? We had this property where if I took the derivative of the area function, I wound up with, um, I wound up with, um, with my original function again. And then I had this other interesting property where I could change the base points. We can actually combine these two things. So we've got kind of a change of the base point formula here. Okay. So we combine these facts and we come up with something that is actually very, 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 very important. And here's the thing. Theorem. Okay. The fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. Is this going to be on the test? Um, let me see. What's that wo second word there? Fundamental. And the class name is calculus. Maybe a thought. One to five. How do we feel about the fact that this is slightly important? Okay. This is the big whole theorem. Okay. Let f let d be an interval a a point in d and f a function defined on d Okay, let g be a function. Okay, let's just do the ifs here. If, first big one, f is continuous on d, okay? So how do we feel about the setup here? One to five. I've got D an interval, A some point in D called the base point, F a function defined on D. How do we feel about that one to five? Okay. Now, if G is continuous on D and, I'm sorry, if F is continuous on D and G is uh, a function so that G prime of X equals F of X, for all x in d, okay? So the g is some function whose derivative is f. Then, for all x in d, the derivative with respect to x of a u c f a of x, equals f of x. And 
a u c f a of x equals g of x minus g of a. This is called FTC1, and this is called FTC2. Okay, so how do we feel about that 1 to 5? Okay. So we've seen a couple of examples of this. Let's talk about this. So, example. Right? We had f of x equaled um, x over 2. That was what we had before. Now, Give me any function whose derivative is x over 2. Any at all. I should say d equals negative infinity infinity. Any function at all. All right. So g of x equals uh, x squared over 4 plus 537, okay? Is everyone on board with that being a function? Right, so the derivative of this function is that one, okay? Now, I claim that G that A U C F zero of X equals G of X minus G of zero. Okay, well, what is g of 0? Well, g of x is x squared, oops, over 4, plus 537, minus 0 squared over 4, plus 537. And lo and behold, that is what we had here. No, that's for one. This one right here, x squared over four. A U C F two of x equals g of x minus g of two equals uh, let's see, x squared over 4 plus 537 minus 2 squared over 4 plus 537 equals x squared over 4 plus 537 minus 4 over 4 plus 5, minus 537 because I need to distribute the negative equals x squared over 4 minus 1. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? And that's the big idea of module 4. This is it. This theorem right here. And yes, we are going to prove it. Okay? This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Yes, we are going to prove it.
Moreover, this is going to show up on every quiz, and I do mean every quiz, this question, state the fundamental theorem of calculus, will show up on every quiz until the end of the semester. And yes, it will show up on the final. Okay, it is the big idea. And instead of waiting until the class before the final to do it, which is when, you know, it comes in the schedule, I'm doing it now because it's the big idea. It's the big shame, shebang. Okay, so tonight what we did was we started, are there any questions, by the way? So we talked about the area under the curve cut function, and we talked about these properties here that we called a AUC. Okay. There's also a couple more uh, more properties that we could uh, we could talk about. So let's firm up some of these other properties here, right? So other properties. Of AUC. We've got, oops, AUC. By the way, this idea of AUC, that stands for area under the curve. That's mostly the only people who still use this notation are uh, in me is medical school, is pharmacokinetic people, you know, medical people, pharma, uh, um, uh, pharmacist type stuff. Uh, you see AUC all the time in medical literature, and that's what it is, the area under the curve. Um, the reason why you see it in the medical literature and the reason why I'm using it is, you know, just like the derivative, this thing that we're going to call the integral has several different notations. Um, and we're going to focus on, on this one first because this emphasizes the idea that what I'm doing is moving. The other one does not. Um, the other captures this idea of staticness. And, and that's an important idea, but we, right now we want to think of this thing as moving. So we had a change of base point formula. Let A and B and D. So this formula was this one right here. A, U, C, F. Uh, B of X equals A U C F uh, A of X minus A U C F A of B. Uh, that was that kind of um change in uh, base point formula that we did. Okay. All right, so there are any questions about this? And this is actually intuitive. If I take two points and add them together, it makes sense. All right, any other questions about this? Okay, so that's what we're doing. Let me go ahead and leave you with this picture. This picture is the most, kind of the key to the whole thing. If you can remember this moving picture, You'll be able to do most of the problems in the, I mean, you know, there's techniques to the problems, but the key concept is remembering this basic idea of the picture that I'm moving to the right and I'm sketching out area under the curve. So the area between the curve, the X axis and the curve, positive if I'm above, negative if I'm below, and I'm kind of moving through it. Okay. And then I've got this idea of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, and that's the other really important idea, right? Um, and it's those two things. It tells me that the derivative, no matter what the base point, right? Notice the base point doesn't matter. So if here, I could say notice the base point doesn't matter. Okay, and then I've got this idea that I can actually compute what these AUC functions are. Okay, all right, it's 8 p.m. That's it for me for tonight. Um, I will see everybody, unless you have questions, I will see everybody uh, or half of you or most of you to, for class tomorrow. Uh, we will have a problem set that focuses on antiderivatives and computing them um, while we play with this um, some more. There is no web assigned for tonight. There's no web assigned for tomorrow. 
The first website for this week will be on Tuesday um, when um, I'll have it up and we'll kind of have done enough of the work to get there. Okay, any questions, comments, issues, suggestions, or thoughts? Okay, I will see you all later. Thank you.